Hi, my name is Robert J. Sawyer, and we're looking at my collection of ebook readers. I started reading ebooks with this Handspring Visor Neo on October 19th, 2001. It cost $299 and had a backlit uh, LCD screen. My next major unit was the Franklin eBook Man 911. I spent $229 US on that, and I got that on October 20th. 2001. So just a day after I bought the Handspring Visor Neo, which I decided wasn't man enough for the job. After that, I got this unit over here. The RCA Reb 1100, or REB 1100, which is based on the old Rocket eBook. A lovely machine, actually. It's uh, very versatile. Would do all four directions, this way, this way, this way, and this way. Nice big page up, page down. Built-in um, uh, dictionary, and you could plug it into the phone line to download new content. Uh, very nice machine. Don't remember what I paid for it. About $300, I think. Uh, after that, I picked up one of these, which is a Sony Clie PEG uh, TH55. Cost me US $259. I got that on September 7th, 2004. It's still, there it goes, power off, still my favorite ebook reader. Uh, does fiction wise as e reader format, Moby Pockets format. Uh, very versatile, very easy to operate. Uh, after that, I started getting some more dedicated ebook reading devices. I got an ebook wise. Uh, device here sold by FictionWise. I picked that up in September of 2006 for $115, $115, including a multimedia card, uh, a smart media expansion card, I should say. And it does an okay job. It's the same hardware as the RCA below it, uh, but the software is different. I got to say the RCA had much better software than the eBookWise, and I found the fonts on the eBookWise too ugly to actually read. Made very little use of that unit. It was a bit of a disappointment. One of my fans, two of my fans, Peter Robinson and Vanessa Gaudio, gave me this lovely iRex Iliad, which is a dedicated ebook reading machine. Here we've got one of its classic problems here. The text starts out in normal text and everything is turned to italics, which is a mistake. Uh, the italics should have gone on but turned right off after the race for God there. Uh, very unfortunate that the hardware was way slicker than the software ever was on the iRex. Had this very nice page change bar here that made it very interesting to use and one of the largest screens. Now this was a gift, but list price was $699 US. Big expensive item. Got that on Saturday, May 3rd, 2008. Uh, this one I'm actually very, very fond of. Let me turn it back on here because it's just gone dark on us. This is the Ectaco Jetbook Lite. Uh, it's showing uh, e-reader formatted content from FictionWise. It uses this nifty little bar here to change the pages. It's not an e-ink display. The iRex you just saw was. This is just an LCD display, but a very good modern state-of-the-art LCD. Great contrast. The device is lightweight, and it runs on uh, four AA batteries, so you can not worry about whether you're running out of uh, ability to charge it up. I bought that, and almost the same time, uh, I bought the one right next to it. I bought that on December 18th. This one on December 19th, 2009. The Ectaco was only $149. This was $259, and it's the Foxit eSlick, uh, which is an e-ink device with a six-inch screen and purports to read uh, fiction-wise content, e-reader format content, as well as EPUB. And because Foxit is a PDF maker, it's supposedly good about reading PDFs, but I have not been particularly impressed by its ability to do that. Uh, page change is uh, like that. You can see the typical e-ink going to black and then going to white. Uh, the bounce is sometimes called. Nice little device, very lightweight, very, very thin. I actually like the form factor, but I wish there was more than just that way to change the pages. Not a touch screen on that device. This one, the Irex Iliad below it, was a touch screen uh, using a, a, a stylus. Most recent purchase over here is the Barnes & Noble Nook. I bought that on Saturday, February 13th, 2010, $259. They've just come out. Uh, it's got this uh, combination of a e-ink display, six inch here, and an LCD display below hand because e-ink is notoriously bad at letting you navigate uh, and it lets you do various functions here with the e-ink, with the color display uh, instead of the e-ink display and supposedly that's quicker. There we go to the main screen and I can go back to the book I was reading 
Uh, here it comes. It's a book called Adam's Tongue about the origin of language. You change pages with buttons on either side. This is obviously the big competitor for Amazon's Kindle, uh, and I'm so far reasonably happy with it. But one thing I don't like is almost all of the recent machines get into their head that it makes sense to write justify all the text. The uh, eSlick here, I should say, the eSlick here is doing it, uh, the IREX Iliad over here is doing it, and the Nook is doing it, but none of them do a very good job. In fact, the Nook does a particularly atrocious job of write justifying text in that it um, ends up having very wide spacing between lines because there's no hyphenation. Uh, it doesn't know that you can legally wrap the text at an M dash, so when you do find an M dash in the middle of a at the end of a line, it doesn't wrap it around. You see here, the break should have been after the word thinking, which would have made the spacing on this line much tighter. Uh, it's actually very distracting to read, and I would say for a lot of people who appreciate the aesthetics of a printed book, that's a deal breaker. But otherwise, it's fascinating. You're looking at, in aggregate, about $3,000 worth of ebook reading hardware here, and for my own personal use, almost nine years now of using devices to read ebooks. I'm an absolute convert to the concept of electronic book readers. I just hope that we actually get the ideal hardware device, a decent price point, and the ability to share the content. Now, one reason I'm a devotee of uh, FictionWise's e-reader format is that it is not registered to the device the way Moby Pocket is. It's registered to the credit card that's used to purchase it. So as it happens, I have the exact same e-books on this device, the Barnes & Noble Nook, this device, the Ektaco Jetbook Lite, this device, the Fox at eSlick Reader, this device, the Sony Clie, and this device, even the ancient handspring visor Neo. All of them can use the same books with no restrictions. I can put as many copies of the books I own on as many devices as I personally own. Uh, the Rocket eBook format is no longer really supported. The eBook Wise has its own special format and only a handful of uh, modern titles are available for that. The Franklin eBook Man used Moby Pocket, which meant you had to register a limited number of devices. Moby Pocket allows four. So this book device and the iRex could have uh, the same books on it. But I find, plus my desktop computers, my netbook computers, and all the places I want to have my eBooks, that four devices just wasn't enough, which is why the social DRM, tied into a number you're not likely to give to people, of uh, FictionWise's e-reader format is the format of choice for me. Um, of all these devices, when I'm looking for one to actually pick up and read, I gotta say it's this guy. He fits nicely in my hand, and I use him all the time, the Sony Clie. Next to that, I actually have a real fondness for the Jetbook Lite, even though it's not an e-ink display. One of the reasons, page turn is very, very fast, essentially instantaneous, um, and the contrast is very, very good. You can see that the text is crammed way too close to the left-hand margin on that device. Same thing on the right-hand margin. It shouldn't be anywhere near that tight. They should fix that. Fox at eSlick did fix that. They used to have the same problem. I and others complained, and they did add a 10-pixel margin on either side. But again, going back to the old Sony Clie, a Palm OS device, you can set your margin width. You can set right justification on or off. You can set uh, normal video or, let's see if I can do it without the stylus here, or inverse video. If that's your preference, you can set any kind of font size you want there. Still a very versatile way to do it. The Nook and the Kindle and, of course, the Sony Reader, which I don't have, are going to probably battle it out for market supremacy. I'm really banking on the Nook uh, doing well. It's a beautiful physical device, but they've really got to pay some attention to the aesthetics of page layout if they've got any hope of winning over people who really do appreciate the printed word. My name is Robert J. Sawyer. I'm a science fiction writer by profession. My books are available for all these devices. You can visit my website at sfwriter.com or another name for my website because the TV series Flash Forward is based on my novel of the same name. Go and have a look at flashforwardnovel.com. Thank you.